A website that doesn't allow you to navigate with URLs can be considered a failure in the world of web dev. Unfortunately, Flutter projects start out like that. But in this video, I will show you an easy way to create custom URLs, a maintainable way to nest your layouts, which will give us a simple way to perform deep URL navigations. We'll start with a project that we built in part one of this free Flutter web series. This will allow us to only focus on the navigation code in this video. You can follow along by cloning the repo in the description and using the tutorials number two nested route start branch. The starting project has a home view. And when you tap on the image, it'll navigate you to the course details view where the user can view the course. The ID of the course is hard coded at the moment, but we want to be able to open different courses in this view. You can select the chapters on the side where we can see our first problems. Number one, the URL looks like this. And by the structure of it, we know that we can't use this URL to navigate to this view and show a different course just using the URL. Number two is if you copy this URL and open the tab directly to it, the website breaks. This is because it doesn't understand how to destructure a URL. And number three, if you select the chapter on the side you see that the URL doesn't change this means you can't link to a specific chapter in your website so let's start with a custom and dynamic path URLs each course has an ID so if we pass the course ID to the view when navigating we can get the correct course from the back end using that ID so we start with adding a path with a dynamic segment first we add the course ID parameter to our course details view we add a special annotation to tell it that we want the course ID to be a dynamic path parameter then we can pass the course ID to the view model and in the view model we can add a new constructor with the same name that accepts the course ID using this we can now update our route entry in the app file to use the course ID as a dynamic path segment. This states that when you navigate to the course slash value, the value will be used as the course ID. Now let's run stack generate and then run the app using flutter run dash d chrome. You can now see that the courses ID reflects in the URL and the path is also much easier to read. Speaking of a course, I'm creating a detailed Flutter web course. If you'd like to be notified when it's ready, sign up using the link below. Now back to the video. We'll turn our focus on the course details view nested routing. What we want is each of the chapters to reflect the ID in the URL. This will allow us to share a link directly to a specific chapter in a specific course. We want something like slash course, slash course ID slash chapter ID. If you look at the course details view desktop, you'll see that all the UI for the course content is in the same view. So the first thing that we want to do is move that into its own file. We run stacked create view course chapter, then take all the content in the expanded child and paste that as the body of the course chapter view dot desktop file. You'll see a few things break. Most of it you can import. What you can't import is the selected chapter. So for this view, we will pass in the the chapter ID as a path param as well as an optional chapter model. Additionally, we'll pass this to the view model. Then we can add the correct signature to the view model as well. Now we can use the chapter ID where it's required and the chapter property in place of the selected chapter. Then we can configure our nested routing. We'll move the course chapter view as a child of the course details view and we'll set the path to chapter ID. What we are telling the stacked framework here is that we want the path to simply be the the chapter ID. So when we navigate to course slash flutter web slash readme, we are expecting the framework to open course details view and pass in flutter web as the course ID and internally navigate to the course chapter view and pass readme as the chapter ID. The next thing we want to do is tell stacked where to render the nested routes. In the course details view desktop where we removed all our original code, we can now simply make the child of the expanded widget a nested router. This completes our routing setup. Now if you run stack generate and run the app, you'll see that the nested section shows all white. The reason for that is because it doesn't have an ID for the chapter. So for now we'll use the redirect route to navigate to the readme chapter. This will also give you some insight into how to use redirects in the stacked framework. This is just a placeholder for now. We'll make it more robust later on in this video. If you run stack generate and then run the app, you'll now see that it loads the readme chapter. So right now you'll see if you select chapters, the readme ID doesn't change anymore and the URL also is not updated. To fix that, what we need to start with is to update the show chapter function in course details view model. And we want this function to navigate to the course chapter view with the correct data. 
This can be done by calling replace with on the router service and passing the route data. We also give it a unique key to ensure that the route is not seen as a duplicate route and not put on top of the stack. If you run the app now and select the chapters, you'll see that the URL updates and show the chapter ID as you click through them. Now our URL is working and the nested routing is working, but we still have two problems. The selected course is not showing on the left as highlighted anymore. And if you navigate directly to a chapter ID, the title and the subtitle is not showing up. This is because the chapter that we pass in is still null when we navigate there. This leads us to our section of how to access path parameters in your code. We need to know what the chapter ID is in the URL in order for us to know if it's selected or not. So we'll update the is sidebar item selected function to check for the chapter ID and use that to determine if it's selected or not. We get the ID from the router service, top route and check is selected. With this update, we can see that the sidebar now lights up as we select the chapters. The last step to the nested routing is to handle the initial route navigation. This is when you ensure that your host route passes the correct data to your nested route on start. In our case, the course details view model should pass the correct data to the course chapter view. We'll do this in the future to run function where the course details view model gets its data from the course service. We'll store the fetched course locally. We'll make use of the same trick to get access to the chapter ID. Then either show the chapter ID or the first chapter in the course. And once we have this information, we'll navigate to the course chapter view route and pass it along. And with that, the changes for the basics of our nested routing is complete. If you want to improve the Flutter web experience, follow the six tips in this video to make your website feel more premium.